Good morning, everyone. November the 15th, and I'm coming to you with a, a really a critical update, a breaking news update in regard to conversations that have now happened between Olaf Scholz, the Chancellor of Germany, and Vladimir Putin. This has happened. It was a conversation that lasted about an hour. And in addition to that, we've got some breaking news coming out on a statement from Zelensky. We've got a statement from Umarov who is the defense minister of Ukraine, and we also have some information coming out of North Korea. So guys, thank you for being here for this facts-only video. This is what is happening right now, about 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States, 6 p.m. in Ukraine. First of all, I can confirm for you 100% that Schultz and Putin have had a phone call. Schultz called Putin. The conversation lasted about an hour, and I have the confirmations from Ukrainian side, German side, and even the Russian side um, on what unfolded in that conversation. So let's start at it. Yes, the conversation happened. Schultz and Putin spoke on the phone for the first time since 2022. It has been about two years since the Chancellor of Germany and the dictator there, Volva Putin, in the Kremlin have even spoken. The conversation lasted approximately one hour. Now, I, I will share this with you. I do not know if the conversation was in German or in German-Russian. No way to know. Maybe we'll find out in the future, but here's what I can tell you. Vladimir Putin speaks perfect German. He also, of course, speaks perfect Russian, and he speaks very good English. So did the conversation happen in the German language and translation was not needed? It could have. I doubt it <clears throat> due to it being an, an official international call. It probably went through translation for records and um, official statuses that need to be. However, it could have happened. So if it happened in German, that was a long conversation for an hour. If it happened in translation when it was necessary, you probably had about 40 minutes of conversation and an additional 20 minutes taking time for the translation. Um, as I travel around the world, I do a lot of things through translation, and usually it takes about 33% uh, longer, not 50%. It's not a double or 100%. It's about 33% longer for the conversation to take place. So regardless, the conversation happened, lasted for an hour. What did Schultz say? Schultz openly condemned to Putin's face Russia's aggressive war against Ukraine and called on Putin to end it. And you need to pay attention here. He called on Putin officially to withdraw his troops, not just end it, stop firing, and let's set up a zone. He says, no, end it and withdraw your troops. Now, of course, this is what we want. And we want Ukraine to have its 1991 borders and security guarantees. That's the golden egg that is a part of Zelensky's victory plan. But important to hear today that Schultz called on Putin to withdraw his troops. Schultz additionally also asked Putin, or, or yeah, called on Putin and asked Russia to negotiate with Ukraine for a quote, just and lasting peace. That just and lasting peace, of course, speaks to the same two things. Withdraw your troops, Ukraine gets its territory, and a security guarantee is in place. Schultz then stressed Germany's, and I have it here in red for you, unwavering determination to support Ukraine in its fight against Russian aggression for as long as necessary. So not only was Schultz being direct saying, in this war, have a just, have a lasting peace. The world is changing. There's a new administration. I don't know if he said this or not. I'm, I'm just maybe imagining here if I was Schultz. There's a new administration in the United States. That's a wild card. We don't know what's going to happen. The European Union is becoming embattled and emboldened to fight against you even stronger. You need to get out right now. Schultz stressed that Germany would support Ukraine in its fight against Russian aggression as long as necessary. Very good and very bold statement. Now, I do want to note for you that Chancellor Schultz spoke on the phone with President Zelensky prior to calling Vladim uh, yeah, prior to calling Vladimir Putin, and he also agreed to call President Zelensky after speaking with Putin. Now, that call has happened a couple of hours ago, and I'm really giving you the, the breaking news on it. So is it possible that Schultz has already contacted Zelensky? I would say there is a, a high chance that he has already called Zelensky to give an update and report on the conversation. Now, what did Putin say? 
I don't know everything that Putin said, but I do know that one of the statements that Putin replied to Schultz was, he said, Russia has never refused and is open to negotiations regarding Ukraine. Folks, that is the can story that he always gives. But remember, that negotiation is only on their own terms. You see, Russia really doesn't negotiate. What they want to do is say, okay, this is the way it is. This is our terms. And if you don't like it, then we will just continue to wipe Ukraine off the planet. Folks, that is not negotiations. That is an edict and a mandate of an evil empire that is invading a sovereign nation. Putin also saying, the new territorial realities must be taken into account in any negotiations. Of course, the land that we have stolen, Lugansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Kherson, and Crimea. Now, multiple sources inside Ukraine have stated that Zelensky actually urged Schultz not to call Putin. The question would be, why? Very simple. You give credence to the dictator when you call him. You give him the authority when you call him. I remind you that Vladimir Putin is and has a warrant out for his arrest as a war criminal by the ICC. At the conclusion of the call, Schultz and Putin agreed that their assistance would be in touch. Now, I'm assuming that if it hasn't already happened, Schultz and Zelensky will be talking and there will be updates on that. Now, here is what is interesting, and I, I do not have a slide for this because it just happened. As I was getting ready to record this video, Zelensky coming out today, interviewed, and on multiple sources there inside Ukraine, says, guys, listen, I'm not getting any bad vibes from the Trump administration. In fact, everything I'm hearing to this point from the Trump administration is that they support my key points of our victory plan. So I don't want to project ahead. I don't want to be negative, but I also want to be truthful. We are feeling encouraged from what we are hearing coming out of the United States. Additionally, we know that Europe getting stronger. Macron, the administration and the leadership there in Great Britain, strong, bold statements coming out. Now the Schultz call to Putin saying, you need to stop it. You need a, a just and a lasting peace. And then at the same time, Zelensky saying, hey, we're hearing some good things coming out of the Trump administration. I am optimistic. I am encouraged. All of these things playing together? Oh, I think so. For sure, I think there's some critical timing on that. Now, in addition to that, Umarov, this gentleman here you see in the picture, is the defense minister of Ukraine. The article on the right is in Ukrainian. The article on the left is in English. The bottom line is this, four or five days ago, the New York Times came out with a, an article <laughs> stating that Ukraine was willing to possibly give up its territory to guarantee security. Umarov coming out today and saying, what a bunch of hogwash. We are here to liberate our territory. We are here for our <clears throat> 1991 sovereign borders. We are here for real Ukraine, and we vow to liberate and fight for our territory. So guys, if you look at it, all of these things happening today, it's quite uh, uh, a coming together of multiple narratives that are pro and positive Ukraine. For that today, on November the 15th, I am encouraged today. I'm much more encouraged. Is, <clears throat> is the front lines difficult? Brutally difficult. Is Ukraine losing some territory right now? Yes, they are. But is Ukraine fighting like madmen? Absolutely. And does it appear that we've had some good things happen on the international front today? Absolutely. Now, with that said, we do need to pay attention to this wild card here, Kim Jong-un. We do have now geotag location of uh, North Korean heavy equipment in transit west meaning coming towards Ukraine. It was geotagged today by Sternenko and his team, and it's about halfway through Russia. So there are still some a couple of days, but heavy equipment is coming towards Ukraine. And today, Kim Jong-un ordering his military production there in North Korea to mass-produce unmanned drones. Does North Korea already have drones? Yes. Do they have high-tech and really good ones? No. Can they get the technology from Russia and from Iran? Absolutely. 
do they have the war machine to really pump out a lot of drones? 100% yes. I remind you that 27% of the state budget of North Korea is dedicated to its military industrial complex and their war machine. So do not brush this off. Because if they start mass producing drones and they start supplying them to Russia, who is already mass producing drones, who is already in partnership with Iran, this drone situation gets many, many times worse. So guys, overall, really good news today. We will see what comes out from it. But as I'm finishing recording this at the 11 a.m. hour here in the East Coast of the United States, that is where we are at. I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking, commenting. Thanking, thank you for helping us grow. We are almost to 14,000 subscribers, and that is just phenomenal. I hope today you click that subscribe you become the 14,000th one. I would deeply appreciate it. And all of our team there in Ukraine. I can tell you, Zhenya, out on the front lines right now, dropping aid. And um, I'm, I'm sad I can't be there with him right now, but I'll be going back to Ukraine after Christmas and supporting our efforts and our team there and reporting to you directly from the front lines inside Ukraine. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you for dropping a comment, hitting a like. Thank you for your support, for your care. And as always, a special thanks to our moderators. And tonight, or this afternoon, or this morning, <laughs> it's still morning here, uh, I want to give a big shout out because right behind the camera there, I see my lovely wife. She's sitting over there, uh, sending some messages on her phone, looking at me and waving, and I have a great wife, a great family, and a great support system, and I consider all of you a part of our family too. Be blessed and have a great day.